Welcome to my clubhouse. My name is Sally Cologne, and today it's going to be super fun. First of all, it's two women on the couch, okay? I am with this incredible human being. I just finished reading her book, Eat, Pray, F My Life. She's an author, a director, an actress. Please help me welcome Miss Gabrielle Stone in the house. Hi. Yes. Um, I'm so happy to be here. Girl, I've been stalking you for months. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad <laughs> thing, but thank you. No, it's a good thing. I, you know, Angie, our producer, told, you know, you, you've been around her for many, many years. Yeah. But she told me about this book, and, and I'm writing a book right now. And she said, you need to read this book. It's, you know, Gabby. We've been around each other for many, many years. I'm like, all right, fine, I'll read the book. I love the title. The title is what inspired me to read the book. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Because, you know, Eat, Pray, Love is one of my favorite movies. Anyway, so. Oh, well, that's always, like, tricky because some people go into it and they're like, ooh, Eat, Pray, Love. And I'm like, that is not, not this book. Not this book at all. <laughs> not at all. A little bit, but not really. Yeah. So what was, I mean, I know the inspiration for the book, but tell our audience, what was the inspiration for the book? Yeah, so I was married for almost two years, found out my husband was having an affair with a 19-year-old for six months. Filed for divorce, left, and really quickly after, met this actor in Hollywood, fell in love, just zero to 100, like, romance. Mm -hmm. and it was just, it was ridiculous. I mean, everybody loves a good romance. But, yeah, and you know, it was like, yeah. oh, of course I had to go through my divorce. Of course the cheating had to happen, <laughs> because look where I am now. Yeah. It's all meant to be. Um, and really quickly, I was introduced to his family, calling me his girlfriend. We were like, this is it. We're done. Okay, great. Um, and he invited me on a month-long trip to Italy with him. Within how long was that? Uh, I think it was the second day we were together. Oh, wow. And of course, like, look, I was like, you're crazy. What? Yeah. And uh, asked him when he was leaving, and he said September 4th, which would have been my two-year wedding anniversary. Mm. And I said, when are you coming home? And he said October 4th, which is my late father's birthday. So at that point, I'm like, all right, universe, yeah. I hear you. Yeah, it's, I'm we're going aligned. on the trip. Yeah, we're alive. Okay, buy my ticket. Everything's, like, magical for a month and a half. 48 hours before we were getting on the plane, he told me he needed to go by himself and broke up with Ooh. me. When I tell you I was devastated, like, this Ooh. man broke my heart like my ex-husband never could have done. Wow. And I was sitting on my bed at my mother's house, because that's when you move after you get divorced yeah. at 28. <laughs> Back um, to mom's house. In yes. a pool of tears with a bottle of wine, mm -hmm. and was like, well, I have a decision to make. I can either stay at home heartbroken, or I can go travel Europe for a month by myself. So I took a backpack and I did six countries over the span of the month and wrote Eat, Pray, FML. Wow. You mentioned your mom. Yes. Who's super famous for those of you guys <laughs> that don't know. You know the movie E.T.? Everybody knows E.T. Yeah. She was the mom on E.T. She was an incredible actress. She's still yeah, rocking she, it. Yeah. She works all the time. Absolutely. She was the mom in Cujo, in The Howling, like big wow. 80s horror star. But yeah works constantly. And what's it like, like growing up in Hollywood, growing, I'm sure there was lots of celebrities in your house hanging out with your mom. And uh, there were, but you know, my parents, my, my dad, Christopher Stone, who passed when I was young, um, was also an actor and director. And they kept it very normal, as normal as you can mm -hmm. when you have two parents in Hollywood. Like if anyone booked a job, the other wouldn't take one, which is very hard to do. Mm -hmm. If someone was out of town for more than two weeks, the whole family went to go visit. So I got to go to some amazing places when I was younger. Um, someone was always at my dance recitals, at my soccer games. Oh. Like I had a very incredible, normal childhood. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of times people are like, oh, she's a celebrity's kid. She's effed up in the, no, you know, my because the parents is, are never around. My mom is so normal. She's from Kansas. She's like very just keep it at the home life, you know? <laughs> yeah, which is awesome. So I'm sure a lot of people are super curious about who you ended up with, which by the way, stay tuned, Instagram, TikTok, <laughs> everybody, because her new man is in the house and he's going to be joining us towards the end yeah. of the interview. So don't go anywhere. It's so exciting. <laughs> so are you still in touch with the people that you traveled, you know, you met while you were traveling in Europe? I'm in touch with a lot of the people that I met on the trip. Um, if people are curious about if I'm in touch with the man who broke up with me before the trip, <laughs> that's all answered in the sequel, which is called The Ridiculous Misadventures yes. of a Single Girl. Because um, there's a lot more to the story that happened after I came home from Europe, and that's really what the second book is about. It's the next two years of my life. Mm -hmm. and um, But I still talk to a lot of the people I met on the trip. Um, I've seen a lot of them since I've come home. Mm -hmm. uh, when the book came out, it was kind of this very surreal experience, because when I was on the on the journey and I would meet people, I would say, you know, like I'm writing a book and if you're hanging out with me, you're probably gonna be in it. And yeah. um, so it was really 
wild for these random, just like normal travelers to then end up written about in a book and have all these people fall in love with those characters. Mm -hmm. It's been a really wild experience. Yeah. So speaking of characters, is this going to be a movie eventually? I don't know. Because first comes the book, <laughs> then comes the movie. Uh, I don't know. I think that there is a really good possibility and potential for that. And I, it would be a dream of mine to see it on the big screen. I know a really good female director. Okay. We'll have to chat. <laughs> That's what I do. Okay, anyway, we could go direct. Right. Anyway, so Javier. Yes. When the book came out, was there, was he upset about it? Was he happy about it? Like, I can't imagine. Javier, who for context is the man that broke up with me before the trip, was actually very supportive of me writing the first book. Um, mm. Anyone in the first book that I included text messages from had to sign a release for okay. me. So that included Javier, his mother, his sister. sister. Um, so they were all very supportive, and that meant the world to me. I don't think it would have been as easy for me to put my life out in such a vulnerable way without the support from that family, mm -hmm. um, especially his mom, because I yeah. do care very deeply about her. Uh, I can't say that he was the same about the second book. Um, <laughs> that was a different situation and different experience yeah. and I think when people read the second book and how our journey kind of played out they'll understand why um, but the first one yeah he was very very supportive about that can't say the same about my ex-husband really no he definitely did you get the attorney phone calls uh you know <laughs> it, it, luckily there's a lot of laws that protect writers That's and right. I think when he I'm sure did go to an attorney to try and sue me. They quickly were like, you won't win, don't try. Um, mm -hmm. But he he found other ways to uh, try and get that vengeance on me. Mm, yeah. I know about those types. Yeah. So <laughs> is your, so you're engaged now. I am. To a very good looking man in he's the lobby. Not, Hello. He's not hard on the eyes. <laughs> he's easy on the eyes. <laughs> so is, does he ever have, you know, moments where he's like, she's going to write a book about me if these don't work out? Like, is, Oh, he is in the, he's very much so in the second book. <laughs> Oh, our whole journey is in the wow. second book. Yeah, and it it was interesting because, you know, I didn't know I was going to write the second book when I was living that part of my life. I had just released Eat, Pray, FML, mm -hmm. and the audience were the ones that were like, we need a second book. We mm -hmm. have to find out what happened after Europe. Like, you can't leave us hanging. But I was still living that journey. I didn't know how that was going to end or if it was going to be interesting enough to put into a book. Right. Um, but he knew about the first book. He was at the first release party with me. And I think when I sat down to finally decide and write the second book, I had a lot of fear in it because mm -hmm. I had a relationship to protect. Right. Um, and I still needed to be authentic and honest with my readers and with myself. That's why the first one was as successful as it was because people really could tell I wasn't holding back yeah, in any way. you definitely didn't hold back. Yeah. And so the second one... You know, there's nothing in the first book where I'm ashamed of, mm -hmm. or I, you know, yes, I had a one night stand, like so sue me. But I, there's but nothing did you in have, there. Didn't you have three one night stands? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> one night stand is okay. Hang okay, on. the way I read okay. it, there was three one night stands. One Am night I wrong? Stand, one night stand is where you you do the deed and then you never see or talk to them again. Okay, the other it, two, like I spent time with, there was more okay. of like a relationship with. So <laughs> listen, I was like, this girl's living her best. Dang, a you know, life for, on this you're trip. In your 20s, yeah. for recently divorced, you got to do what you got to do. Um, and Absolutely. I learned a lot from yeah. all of those different men. But um, in the second book, there are things and choices that I made that I'm not necessarily proud of. Yeah. Um, and while my now fiancé knows everything that went on and all of the timelines and all of the details, it's different to read yeah. the details of that in an explicit way. Um, and we, you know... We had to, I, I will vividly remember him being in his office just like this when I gave him the first <laughs> copy of it um, to see that he was like okay with anything yeah. and if I needed to take anything out and he powered through it. There was a couple moments where he was pacing back and forth in our living room. Um, but we, we made it through because honestly, if we hadn't gone through all the stuff the way that we did, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be as strong as we are now. We might not be together now. Right. So it really was all worth it. Yeah. Um, and even in the stuff that's hard to read in the book, it's also our love story. So yeah. it's really special to me that we're always going to have that to, to look back on and show our kids one day when they're much, much older. Much older. <laughs> <laughs> Over the for age sure. of 18. Yeah, for sure. <laughs>
So obviously you were a totally different person before you wrote the book. I was. Tell me how you've transformed, like who you were then, who you are now. I think I went to Europe very broken and very afraid to be alone. Um, I lost my dad pretty traumatically when I was six years old, walked in and found him dead on the floor from a heart attack. I then lost my high school sweetheart at 18 in a car accident. So I've always had a fear of abandonment when I love someone, they leave. And my ex-husband and Javier were prime examples of that playing yeah. out in my adult years. Um, so I went on this trip being very afraid to be alone. Mm -hmm. And this was the universe's clear way of making me go face all that head on. So I learned a lot about myself. I learned how capable I was. And I realized that I'll ne I'm never truly abandoned because I will never abandon myself. Mm -hmm. And that was such a life-changing mind switch, mindset switch for me. Um, and I came back from Europe a totally different woman because of that. Yeah. One thing that, because I had a little bit of a life transformation after my divorce and I'm raising kids. You don't have kids yet, right? No. Not yet. It's good that the transformation happened before kids. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I feel like my transformation happened after I had kids. Mm. So they picked up a lot of my bad habits. Right. Then I transformed and then now my girls are, I'm handing them tools that now I have. So it's it's good for you as you you know become a mom yeah. one day yeah. that you've already transformed and have the tools that now you can give to your kids. So then they're, that generational curse you yeah, know, is broken. Absolutely. I think I'm already starting to realize that my fiance has a beautiful 10 year old little girl who's oh. my bonus child as yeah. we call her. Um, and it's, yeah, I'm very thankful that I went through all of this at an earlier age. Um, I'm, proud to be a part of the divorce club. Um, and it, yeah, it's, it's not that bad of a club to be in. It's not bad. We're pretty cool. <laughs> um, and really, really, really thankful that I did not have kids with, just because of who my ex-husband mm. is as a human. Like mm -hmm. I, I wake up every morning and I'm like, thank you for my health. Thank you for my family. Thank you that I did not have kids with my ex-husband. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's so interesting? Because obviously you knew who he was-ish when you married him. And then there was the big surprise. Like, I feel like a lot of times love, you know, the, the heart is the biggest muscle in, the, in, mm -hmm. in our body, right? So once that takes over, yeah, we're a mess, you know, like the brain stops a little bit. So did, was it just like love at first sight? You fell in love, you kind of ignored some of the stuff, or did you not know some of the stuff when you got married? Um, I get what you're saying, because I think I ignored some of the flags with Javier, um, and that was more like I had those love goggles on. Mm -hmm. With my ex-husband, it's like the few small percentage where like he was an actual sociopath and nobody mm -hmm. knew who he actually was, wow. which is what was so scary about it. And I still don't know, and I don't think I ever will know, if he always was that person or if something has like had chemically switched in his right. brain and he changed during the relationship. Mm -hmm. um, but were there red flags about why the relationship wasn't going to work necessarily, yes. Were there red flags to what he became? No. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You just didn't see it. Mm -mm. So I can't imagine that he's dating right now, right? He can't be dating. Because oh, any woman I read this book, it's going to be like this. Where's my red flag? It's such a saga. <laughs> is, um, it, is it here? Hang on. Hang on. Let's, let's pull out. Oh, my God. Stop. Let's pull out the red flag. <laughs> Here's your red flag. Oh, Here's I mean. The, listen. First of all, what's his name? In the book, Daniel. I forgot his name. Yeah. So anyone that reads this book, there's <laughs> no way that this guy is going to have girlfriends after that book. Come on. You know, it's, it's always a tough question because I don't ever want to speak on someone else's relationship. Not mm. his. I don't mm -hmm. really care about, but the people he's in relationships with. Um, from what I've heard in his circle and people that have come into contact with him, he's still with certain people and mm. it's a very um, emotionally and mentally abusive situation. And Sounds right. for that, I don't care who the other person is. I do have sympathy for them. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to do a couple of little red flag. I love that. All right. So <laughs> put your red flag up if you meet a guy and within two days, he asked you to go to Europe for a month. 
Hi, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we call lung bombing. And we're very aware of that now. Very aware. Yes, All right. yes. Put a flag up. If you find out that a guy that's married starts dating a 19-year-old after six months. Yes, yes. I mean, I, okay, look. I've gotten a lot of questions from trolls on TikTok um, that are like, well, why does it matter that she was 19? Why do you have to say that she was 19? And let me address that. Um, it's, yes, that's a legal age. And it has nothing to do with how many years apart you are. My fiance mm -hmm. and I are 14 years apart. Um, we're also like in our 30s and 40s. Right. Um, when you're an adult man and you're dating someone who is 18, 19 yeah. on the precipice of becoming an adult, um, your brain's not fully formed nope. yet and you're a lot more easy to manipulate Absolutely. and that's how grooming starts. Wow. So, so. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Let me fix my flag. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So there's one thing I want to do that I, I like to do with all of my guests. This is like my little book of one-liners that are life-changing. I okay. love this book. I got this on Amazon. And so I'm going to flip the pages, and then you're going to tell me when to stop. Okay. And that's going to be yours for the day. Okay, great. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Stop. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they tried to bury us. They didn't know we were seeds. Oh, <laughs> yeah. is that perfect or what? Dear all the men in my life. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect for you. Yep. Yep. Wow. Was that good, Angie? Wow. Okay. So, <laughs> chills, chills. So, do you have a third book in you coming um, soon? I th Not coming soon. I think I do eventually. I think I need to live a little bit more life first. Um, and I don't, let's hope, unless this one messes up. You better watch out. Hugely. We're watching. <laughs> um, then let's hope it's not like a, a third in the trilogy. But I think, yeah, eventually I will. But it'll be more of a look back at different really important moments of my life and mm -hmm. expanding and teaching on the healing aspects of those, but not anytime soon. I, I need to like enjoy the fact that I wrote these two. Yeah. They were pretty back to back, you know? And they're incredible. <laughs> and by the way, she's hot, hot on TikTok. So make sure you guys are checking it out. We're actually going to do a TikTok. We're going to do a TikTok. We're going to do a TikTok. We're doing a TikTok and we will be <laughs> posting it on our platforms and your doing directing acting like what are you doing right now like what's the latest yeah, thing i'm directing a, a feature probably around april of next mm -hmm. year that's a, a horror film that i'm pretty excited are about. you in it i'm not i'm just okay. directing it's starring a uh, scout taylor compton who okay. is well known in the horror industry who's also a very good friend of mine mm -hmm. and i adore working with her um and then i have my podcast fml talk so we do a show every wednesday that airs which is a lot of work a lot of in work. itself. Yep. Um, and there's some other stuff that's that's percolating that I can't really talk about yet that I, I've been pitching for a while that's starting to come to fruition. So, mm -hmm. so I want to bring your, your man up. Yes. Because for all the fans that have read E Pray, F My Life, and your new book. Yeah. Tell me the name of your new book. The Ridiculous Misadventures of a Single Girl. Wow. <laughs> Are wondering, you know, the, the, the ex-husband's gone, Javier is gone, you know, Chris is gone, all the guys <laughs> from, from All the men are gone. All the men are gone. And this other guy just came into her life, and I want to get the quick story of how he came into your life, and then we're going to bring him on so people can meet him. So okay. how did you meet him? Um, we actually met on a film set. 10 years ago and he will probably more now but when he came back into my life it was 10 years ago and uh he was playing my older brother we we're playing brother and sister <gasps> on a film love that yeah and he was uh he was engaged at the time i was with my college sweetheart he got married had a baby got divorced i got married got divorced went on a europe trip um and we wow. kind of stumbled back into each other's lives a lot of years later what's his name his name is, I was going to say Tyler because that's his name from the book. His name is Taymor. Taymor. <laughs> or Tay for short. Tay. <laughs> so we're going to bring, I want to give you final thoughts before we bring Tay on. What are the final, anything that we didn't talk about that you want to say? Um, I just think if anyone is going through a heartache or any type of grief or loss in your life, know in your heart that everything happens for a reason, whether you can see it in the moment or not, and that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, no matter how dark it seems right now. So keep going forward towards that light because it's more beautiful on the other side than you could ever imagine. So good. Thank I love you. it. <laughs> so we're going to bring Tay on because I know that a lot of your fans are wondering, like, who yeah. did you end up with? Yeah, and so Tay, can you join us on set? Let's 
see, let's see. Hi, Bebe. Hi, Hi guys. <laughs> Here's Tay, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the Thank you very much. Welcome to A lot of people know him as Tyler from the book. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, so where did you, so you met him on the set? We and met then you set. reconnected. Yeah, uh, at a bar. At a bar. At a bar, and I walked in and was like, oh, he's so sexy, but ha I thought he was still married, and then quickly found out that we were both in the divorce club. Wow. <laughs> and was it an instant, like, you're single, I'm single? And then who, did you make a move real quick, Tate? Uh, no, we went to dinner, and I was pretty, yeah, I was interested, but I, I think it took a, took a little longer. Obviously. I didn't think it was a date. I went with no makeup right. in leggings and like spewed my life about my exes. Just for how I like it. The whole, <laughs> for the whole day. Guys like the natural thing, right? <laughs> I love, I, yeah. Way Big more. Time. Yeah, way more. <laughs> yeah, and you are a natural beauty. Oh, well, thank you. You are very much. So you you didn't think it was a date and then give us the quick, like, how did it end up? I Well, I mean, the people would have to read the book to see where we got, to, <laughs> how we got to where we are now because it was a saga, I can tell you that. Um, there was, it was not an easy, like, oh, let's do this. I was still very much so healing. I had just come back from just a mess and was still a big mess. Um, so it, it took a while for me to recognize and accept a healthy love because mm. I was so used to such a toxic love. And you were patient, obviously. Yeah, I mean, there you, you have to be patient, otherwise you're gonna, it, it's not gonna work. She had to go through, she had to heal, and she had to really, you know, pick herself up and become stronger by herself. And uh, I, yeah, I, I, I needed to practice patience, and it made courting her very interesting, I will say that. Well, yeah, he had a whole book to, like, roadmap to all of my fears and I triggers. Was, and... I was the first person, I think, yeah, ever. Yeah, even before my mom. To read the first book. Yeah. yeah. And I read it while courting her, so I would read chapter by chapter and be like, <sighs> okay, don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> and Take notes. F him. <laughs> and, uh, you know. Taking notes for sure. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. That what a great story, and what a great the fact that you read the book and we're still like you know what, there's something about her that's special that I want to get to know. I'm gonna be patient because other guys would have been like no. Oh, let me tell you yeah. he, when I I joke all the time on my podcast that he's like in the top one percentile of men, which is making it very hard for all my readers because they're like if he's not like Tay, I don't want it, and I'm like you go girl, <laughs> um, but also good luck because there's not that many of them. Um, that's right. And really like he what he endured while I was trying to figure myself out, mm -hmm. most men would have bolted long, yeah. long ago. And again, I mean, I think we both feel that if we hadn't gone through what we went through in that book, we wouldn't be as strong as we are now. Yeah. What doesn't kill you makes you strong. I mean, <laughs> seriously, and it almost did, so. <laughs> yeah, so when is the wedding? Do you have a date yet? Um, mm. we, we're talking about March, um, but like, look, it's both of our second rodeos, so we're doing like food trucks, DJ, bar. You go like, throw some beer, some hot yeah, dogs. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. very yeah. not bougie like my first wedding was. We're like okay. more into let's take a vacation and yeah. get into a different house. And, <laughs> and and a lot of life is happening right now, so yeah. we're, we're okay. kind of, you know. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, maybe March. Maybe March. Well, I will be looking for my mailbox in March at that invitation. You will have to come party with us. Because I need oh, some yeah. beer and hot dogs, you know? Yeah, yeah. But thank you so much for You're being so on. Welcome. I'm so glad you came on because as I was reading that book, I kept, again, I was like stalking Angie and saying, when is she coming on? You know, because I, I just enjoyed it. I, you know, like I was on the airplane. I was on the bus. I was in my car. I was walking around, you know, with the ducks around my neighborhood. I read, listening to your book and just... Every minute, I couldn't wait to the next day to like, Aww. I gotta keep reading, I gotta keep reading, you know? It's just, oh, I'm so glad to hear that. It was, it was a great book. And if you guys haven't read the book, it's called Eat, Pray, F My Life. And your second book, because it's a long title, tell the me again. The Ridiculous Misadventures of a Single Girl. <laughs> Both available on Amazon. It's a high recommendation from me. It's an incredible book. Download it today. She reads her own book, which I love. You have a great voice. Thank you. And so pick it up, buy the book, 
read the Audible, get it. I'm sure it's at Barnes and Noble, everywhere books are sold. Um, it's in some bookstores, like okay. the, I think Target and some Walmarts have it. Um, it just depends. But I did self-publish on Amazon, so like awesome. that's the best place to get it. Or okay. people can go to Eat, Pray, FML, and I, I do signed copies, and we have my self-love healing journal on there too. Yeah, and tell people where they can find you on TikTok and Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> if you're on Instagram, I'm at Gabrielle Stone, and on TikTok, I'm at Gabrielle underscore Stone. And I apologize for anything you'll see on my TikTok. Her TikTok you is know. A, listen, her TikTok is amazing. So follow her there. And we're gonna be doing a TikTok, so be looking out for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for being Gabrielle. Oh, Thank you so for welcome. being her Tay. Thank you. Thank you for Thank being you for here. Me. And I cannot wait to come to your wedding. I just invited myself. <laughs> and uh, and thank you guys all for watching. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at Sally Cologne, the number one. On TikTok, I'm Cool Mom Sally. My kids gave me that name. I love and it. on Clubhouse, I'm Sally Cologne. So please follow us there and subscribe to our YouTube channel under Sally Cologne. Thank you all for watching. We love you. We'll see you next time on Welcome to My Clubhouse. Bye-bye. <laughs>